Right, so today I'm going to help you talk to anyone. And my promise to you is that by at the end of this video, you'll have the confidence and the motivation to talk to someone today. Starting with number one, fixing your mindset. We often think it's weird to talk to strangers, especially when everyone around you isn't doing it. And especially if you're in school and there are social groups established already, it's kind of weird to branch out for your, out of your circle. But here's the thing, you won't be violating any social rules doing that. Humans are social creatures, and we actually like talking to people more than you think. It's just that there are two problems here. We've been conditioned to think that it's wrong to talk to strangers, so at the back of our head, we, we second-guess our actions of doing it. And second, we're scared to start conversations. And so we default to ignoring people, even though they're right in front of us. But here's the thing. You aren't supposed to be ignoring people. There are several studies that show that doing that actually has a negative impact on your mental health. And here's why. Thousands of years ago, we used to live in tribes of 150 people. And because there were no Instagram or weird social conditioning, we would acknowledge each other and be more normal and human towards each other. But today, more people are looking down on their phones instead of the people who are right next to them. The people who could be a potential best friend or a potential romantic partner. And it's all because of social media and Hollywood movies. So social media, they, they post all of this hyper-stimulating content, making you unable to be interested in talking to people because your brain is fried from all of this edits and all of this poison in your mind. I know I sound like exaggerating, but I've been through this. I have been using social media, especially Instagram. I, I don't use TikTok. I never use TikTok. But Instagram especially, it just clouded my, my ability to focus and my ability to actually want to do boring things like talking to people. Yeah. And the second thing is Hollywood movies. They've been carefully designed to manipulate you into being more socially awkward. You know, in the romance movies, you know, the, the guy is too awkward to talk to the girl and then the friends are very cringe. It's all of that making you think that that's how humans should act. And the reason why they're doing that is so that you will become weak and dependent on, I don't know, the government, but that's just a conspiracy theory. I used to be very awkward around people. Uh, okay, fine. I still am awkward around people, but I thought that I couldn't change that. I thought that being awkward was my identity. I remember someone calling me awkward and I just, it just stuck with me and I couldn't really think that I could change that. But that changed when I observed my childhood driver. I saw how he talked to people randomly. So we would go... We would park in some parking slot and then he would go up to one of the other drivers there and he'd start a conversation with them. And he'd do this for like every single day. I'd ask him, hey, do you know this guy? I was like, every time he answers, no, he didn't know the guy at all. And that got me thinking like, how does he make it look like it's so easy to talk to people? Like it's so natural for him. But then for me, it's, I'm struggling. I can't even do it. But this story is like a good reminder that if he can do it, so can we. But before I move on to the next step, uh, you're probably scared because you're worried about what other people will think about you if you try to be more outgoing. I get it. I've been there. Exactly what you're, what you're feeling. I know how, it's unco how uncomfortable it feels. And I just want to say that your fear is valid. You probably never had anyone tell you that, yes, being afraid is perfectly normal. But just because you're afraid, it doesn't mean it's impossible to talk to people. It's nine times out of ten. Your worry is that when you talk to them, they'll think, oh, who is this guy? Why is he being so different from what I know him? Or maybe if you've never met before, uh, like, who is this guy? Why is he talking to me? Like, that's not weird. That's weird. But like nine times out of ten, people won't really notice that you're acting differently. And if you're talking to strangers, people don't really think this have the same exact thoughts that you are having. You are having an assumption that people will think in a certain kind of way. But we don't really know that because... Because of the spotlight effect, wherein we are all so focused on ourselves, we think we're the main character of our lives. So the people that you talk to and start conversations with, those people are too busy thinking about their lives. And when you talk to them, it's like they didn't have time to judge you or stuff. It's more of like they're thinking about like, oh, what's for lunch? And then, oh, this guy's talking to me. Okay, this guy's talking to me. So like their focus just like shifted from what they're thinking about to you. It wasn't about what they... It, they weren't busy t judging you because they aren't waking up thinking about you. You get what I mean? So if you once you realize that, it's kind of 
lessens the fear of talking to people and now you don't have to be afraid anymore. The second tip is to forget about first impressions because they're overrated. One major objection that I hear is that, oh, I don't know what to say or what if I come off as weird? But here's the thing, first impressions don't really matter. So I was eating dinner alone at a Japanese restaurant and uh, a few minutes later, uh, this girl uh, went in, entered the restaurant and sat at the table next to me. Now, I wanted to start a conversation, but I want, didn't want to sound weird. So I tried to think of the thing that I should say and recite in my head, but I think, oh, no, no, I shouldn't say that. I should say something else. And I guess time passed by, I kind of, every time I glanced, like, okay, I'm losing my chance. And then out of the blue, a fly went to her table. And then I tried to, like, playfully, like, swap it, like, get away. And then she looked back at me and she laughed and that was it. And I thought, oh, wow, okay. I didn't really need a good first impression. Okay, so what if I ask something completely random? Like I asked, completely random. Hey, is there online class tomorrow? Because I heard in the news, like uh, in my school, the, there were no face-to-face classes at the start of the term because of, I don't know, some, something happened. And she said, yeah. And then after that, the conversation went so much easier after that. And she was actually very friendly, very warm. And we talked about at least 10 different kinds of things for the next hour or two hours. And I even uh, walked her back to her uh, was it like apartment, something like that. And it just baffles me because now I realize, oh, it's not about what I say. It's just about the fact that I acknowledged her existence and started a conversation with the most basic sentence slash question ever. So it if you're coping and you think, oh no, I don't have the perfect pickup line or the perfect uh, funny sentence, it doesn't matter. No one cares. We just kind of want to, uh, we, humans, we just want, want to be acknowledged by other humans. And once that's, uh, once that's down, conversations become way easier after that. But you might be thinking, Arlo, oh no, I always remember first impressions. You know, it's not, I, it's not unimportant. I need it. Okay, fine, fine. But that's a lame excuse to do something that will, give you maybe a good friend or a happy memory that's a lame excuse to avoid doing that so why are you attaching to that i like to remind myself that uh i think i got this from ali abdal it says something like 95 percent of people are friendly they're just scared to make the first move and you'll be able to know whether they want to continue the conversation or not you can see it in their body language but you won't know until you after you say the first sentence so if you're worried that they don't want to talk to you Say, the, say anything, then after that, see how receptive they are. If they're not receptive, then just smile and leave. That's it. You don't have to be worried anymore because you don't have to continue the conversation if you know that they don't want to continue the conversation. You're probably worried that you'll become nuisance to others. Well, you don't know until you start the first conversation. Because for me, I didn't know that the girl wanted to talk to me. I kind of assumed that she didn't until I said the first sentence and then everything became way easier. But Arlo, I don't know what to say again. You don't have to have the first impression. Just say the first thing that comes into your head. For me, I should have just said whatever came to mind. And I literally just said the thing that I was thinking about. So there is this filter in your brain that makes you think you don't know what to say. But it's only because you've trained yourself to not not say your mind. It's a whole different story. But in short, just say the first thing that comes into your head. My third tip is it's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. A study said that Words only make up 7% of communication. Everything else is about verbal and nonverbal. So when we talk about that, it means eye contact, whether or not you're smiling. What's your voice? How, what's your tonality? Are you friendly? Are you warm? And what's your body language? Are you relaxed and open? Or are you closed and you're not facing the person? Because we tend to pick up on subconscious cues like these more strongly than uh, the words that we listen to. So don't get caught up in the words you say. Welcome them with how you present yourself. That's a really good quote. I should quote myself for that. So if you're still, uh, fourth tip is, if you're still confused about what you should say, even after all of this belief shifting discussions, the one thing you can go to is to ask a brain dead question. Like for me, I asked, uh, when when's your online quiz? Uh, oh, sorry, when is tomorrow, is school tomorrow online? Yes or no? Easy brain dead question. Another brain dead question. What time is it? What time does the gym close? What's that you're eating? Just very brain dead question, like zero effort. Just say, just ask it. And then the conversation will be much easier after you start. So I was in the gym today and I saw someone wearing a t-shirt that came from the 
senior high school that I went to. And it literally shows the name of the school. But I still went up to the person and asked, hey, are you from school name? And then the conversation went easily after that. So it's literally just asking a brain dead question. Don't overthink. Just focus on the person and just ask them. So that's the end of the video. If you want more of me, there are links in the description. Subscribe to my newsletter, like, comment, whatever YouTubers say at the end of their videos. I'll see you in the next video.